So halo radio frequency ablation is uh, basically a, a day case endoscopic technique which we do usually under sedation rather than under general anesthesia. The procedure takes about 45 minutes and there are a number of steps. The first step is simply to have a look and make sure there are no visible lesions. Our general approach is this, if there is a visible lesion, we will do an endoscopic mucosal resection on that procedure, let the patient heal and come back six weeks later. If we know there is no visible lesion, uh, we will then put a sizing balloon down the esophagus and under direct vision actually measure the size of the esophagus. Having uh, checked that there are no visible lesions, we then spray a mucolytic such as N-acetylcysteine to remove the mucus from the esophageal wall. We then put a sizing balloon down the esophagus and under direct vision actually size the, es the esophageal um, diameter. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, the esophagus is actually quite a big compliant organ. Uh, the average diameter is around 22 to 25 millimetres. Um, and we then choose a radio frequency balloon uh, to fit for the size of the esophagus. Now there are various technical considerations, for example if the patient has a stricture or if the patient's had previous endoscopic mucosal resection we tend to go for a slightly smaller balloon to minimise the risk of perforation or of uh, mucosal tearing uh, or bleeding. Uh, and then we again under direct vision pass the esophageal uh, treatment balloon into the esophagus uh, and we treat a three centimetre length of Barrett's. The marvellous thing about this treatment is it takes about one second to treat three centimetres. Uh, we then stepwise move the treatment catheter about two and a half centimetres down, so we actually have a very slight overlap in the area we, we then treat, and we treat the next three centimetres, and etc. you just keep going until you've done the whole Barrett's. Because it only takes a second per, per segment, treating an entire length of Barrett's seven, ten, even twelve centimetres is very quick. Um, having done that, we remove everything, clean the balloon, and we then clean the esophageal mucosa. And in fact, what happens is that we've sloughed off the entire mucosa and we simply scrape it off with a, uh, we use an EMR cap actually, and just sort of simply scrape uh, all the way around the esophageal uh, diameter to remove uh, what is now coagulum. Uh, and push it down to the stomach and we then go back for a second treatment to the same area. And whereas the first treatment has treated to a depth of about 500 microns, the second treatment actually treats very little more um, for reasons that are slightly beyond me but it's certainly what I've seen and, and uh, what other people have shown very nicely in scientific studies. Um, and what happens then is that you have completely eradicated the esophageal mucosa but not the submucosa and the importance of that is you end up with very low stricture rates. The stricturing rate after halo radiofrequency ablation is around 7% and these strictures are easy to dilate. Uh, and that's actually wonderful because uh, patients have very few complications. And whereas with the previous treatments I used to do a lot of photodynamic therapy, of course with PDT we had the problems of light sensitivity. No problem with halo. Uh, patients come in, they go home. The issue for the patient is that for the next few days they will have some chest discomfort, maybe some dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, but actually I had quite a lot of patients come in and go home and go back to entirely normal food the next day, no problems at all. At the other extreme there are people who for a couple of weeks are really in quite a lot of discomfort, um, but that's pretty unusual. The average is only two or three days of chest discomfort and dysphagia, and apart from that they're back to normal. And if you compare that to esophagectomy, patients generally like it. The average patient, as I've said before, require one Halo 360 and one or two Halo 90s. Uh, and we tend to do those at, a, at an interval of every three months. Once we have completely eradicated the Barrett's mucosa, at the next endoscopy we will simply take quadrantic biopsies throughout the previous Barrett's segment to check that there are no buried glands. The likelihood of buried glands are very low, uh, well under 1%. I think we're about 0.3% at the moment.